so a lot of Nigerians will believe that, look, it looks like the government is saying we have uh, achieved some successes. Uh, do you need one billion US dollars to consolidate on your successes? Uh, thank you, Sean, to start with. It is important we, the, the public gets to understand that, look, the one billion dollar we are talking about is not just meant or aimed at enhancing the situation in the Northeast alone. Okay? It's got to do with a general upliftment within the armed forces. It's going to enhance of, on capabilities. It's going to facilitate training. It's going to, 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 to um, what's it called now, uh, 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 assist, okay, and move forward all initiatives on manpower generation, okay, which would, of course, assist the situation in the forward lines. All right, all sorts of plethora of issues that will be raised. And Sean, let me tell you something. When you look at our role within the sub region of Africa, all right. when you look at the role we play within the context of uh, 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 um, peacekeeping initiatives in the United Nations, where I think we're about the fourth largest troops contributing country now, when you look at the role we play in the AU and ECOWAS as far as peace and stabilization efforts are concerned, you would agree with me that we need a very strong, very defense machinery on ground. Uh, uh, One that just... has got, okay, what it takes to help us in projecting our foreign policy. All right. Let, let, let's, let's take a moment. Uh, I will allow you to land and give us a sense of what one billion US dollars can buy in terms of arms and ammunition for yeah. Nigerian military. Yeah. That's going to be next. And I have my panel also in our Abuja studio. Don't go anywhere. The conversation just got started, everyone. Stay with us. With the insurgents, what else do they need the sum of one billion dollars for, if not to fund the 2019 general elections in favor of the All Progressive Congress. With the horrid approval of one billion dollars, the Boko Haram insurgents has become a means of looting public funds by this government. You will call you recall that it is on record that Transparency International once said in its report that some top military officials in the country were feeding fat from the war against Boko Haram. By creating fake contracts and laundering the proceeds in the United States, United Kingdom, and elsewhere, I challenge the federal government to make available to Nigerians how the money released by international donors for the fight against Boko Haram was spent. It is quite obvious. We get more equipment. It means uh, we have to employ them further you know, to consolidate on what uh, we have so far achieved. So our capability is increased in terms of the platforms of, uh, that will be procured, uh, in terms of the further training that will be carried out once this equipment are procured. Um, and it means further consolidating on other areas where there are challenges so that the troops will be able to use this equipment and operate very efficiently uh, to be able to uh, defeat uh, all those uh, criminals. On the issues of what these monies are going to be used for, and the fact that at this stage and at this point in time, can Nigeria afford to use that kind of money for security? I'll start by saying yes, Nigeria can afford to use, and Nigeria should use such money for security. I, I just listened to His Excellency Governor Fayoshi, and um, with due respect, I want to say His Excellency is speaking from a position of ignorance. And uh, how do I mean? Um, this money, to start with, is going to help, okay, in enhancing the procurement deficit we have presently. How long has the this military. deficit been there? Okay. How long yes. has this deficit been there? Oh, for quite some while now, because we have never taken the pain, all right, to allot adequately to the military. I tell you something, Shio. 
the military has always been shortchanged at the point of statutory appropriation. At the point of statutory uh, 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 appropriation, that is to say, in the Congress, all right, such so that at the end of the day, you must understand the, there is no single pin you buy in the military, okay, that is produced in this country. We import nearly everything. Well, South, Africa, besides, South Africa down there produce uh, adwares. Good. We should be asking ourselves why. And if we're going to that, it's just an, it, 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 it's a conversation for another day. But, why well, at this stage? Can I, can I ask Mr. Stanley, uh, why would someone like uh, Governor Farashe speak in the manner in which he's speaking yeah. if, for example, security procurement is just a blanket uh, yeah. a, a statement when you say you want to procure? Uh, should the military be telling us what exactly, in details, highlighting to the nation what these monies are for? When we, whenever we talk about security, there seems to be some, uh, uh, on, uh, some clarity not given. Sure, save your breath. I will answer part of all this, okay? Do you know how much some of these platforms cost? For instance, let's start with the air component platform. The U.S. has just approved a good number of uh, Alpha 29 uh, Tucano aircraft for us, okay? You know how much each one is going to cost us? I think about 50 uh, a million dollars or so. And how many were approved for us? You can imagine the chunk that we approved. And we had to celebrate it because as far as they were concerned, it was a gesture to us, as if they were dashing us. It's not coming for free. Look at the combat maritime platforms which the Navy used in securing our waterways. Be it the submarines that we will require to secure our waterways. All this costs money. Have you taken a look at what the uh, 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 land components will require in terms of our tanks? Will this and also in the headsmen attacks and all of that? Or is it just going to be insurgency? Not just insurgency. I'm discussing equipment now. I'm discussing equipment. Where this money can go into. Okay? We are talking... I hope you know the military has manpower issues. And why have these manpower issues persisted? Because we lack what it takes to enhance on our manpower generation efforts. All right, uh, just a moment. Let me go to Indy. Uh, well, I know there's been a lot of agitation from your party as regarding the issues of um, uh, uh, credibility to what these monies are, are for. Are you a bit convinced? And perhaps what exactly would you th say should uh, the government of the day be given to Nigerians in specifics? What we are asking for, you can see clearly that when, you know, specifics are, are requested, when we ask, what is this money going to use for? They are all regurgitating the same thing, where we need it to procure this, we need it to procure... But there are no exact amounts. We need figures. The people need to know what exactly the money is going for. When you say training, what kind of training? Who are you training? These things need to, we don't need this opacity at this time. Transparency of process is not too much to ask for. And then we begin to veil, you know, we attack people, rest, um, you know, um, asking for transparency of process and saying that they don't want Nigerians to get that security. No, we are simply saying that we don't want security to be the blanket, to be the excuse for money to be stolen. And it's really that simple. If you're going to take this money, the processes should be, you know, according to the law, according to the constitution. You should follow the right processes. And then secondly, people should know exactly what this money is going for so that in the future we can point out this is what this money was used for. This is what the government told us step by step by step. I mean, that, it, that can't be too much to ask for. And this is what the PDP is saying. All right. There should uh, be let, legality let, to this process. Let's, let's allow uh, Mr. Akonji to, to, to come in here. And if, uh, um, you heard what India has just said. And uh, if you look at a few of these issues, what exactly uh, should the government be doing immediately to give some level of confidence to Nigerians as regarding these monies being spent, especially in, in the issues of legality of the process? Chair, when security is not discussed on national televisions or on the pages of newspaper. Security is what you plan as somewhere very quiet and then you feel the impact of it. So we don't expect governments to come out and tell Nigerians what we're going to do. But I'll, give, I'll try out some data here right now. We have the Stockholm Institute of International Peace Center that gives an amount of weapons. Like the entire defense budget is about $1.681 trillion. And America alone has 
$611 billion yearly for defense, followed by China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, France, and other countries. Now, back to Africa. Egypt is number one, and Egypt, with a population of about 70 million, spends about roughly $4.5 to $5 billion annually in budget, on defense budgets. We are spending a paltry sum of $1 billion, and we are the largest economy of Africa. We are the mouthpiece of Africa. That's even the sum of money we're going to spend on these platforms is even underfunded. We need more money. We're buying 12 to kind of aircraft for okay. just $600 million, just for the Air Force. Now, I said we shouldn't play politics. With, we shouldn't use security to play politics. Now, let's look at what happened. Just in the previous administration, they also requested because, uh, to uh, uh, $1 uh, billion. Please, uh, 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 Ayobami, our time is uh, out. I will allow uh, Colonel Stanlabo in just about 30 seconds to tell us what the government needs to be doing to ensure, ensure that confidence comes back to the heart of Nigerians when it comes to the issue of security. It's a matter of the government expending this money judiciously in a way in which the citizens would actually see it and be really, really happy that monies meant for the military is being well used rather than what we had in the last dispensation. And I tell you, Sean, given the sort of leadership we have today, whose integrity we can all vouch for. I can assure you this money will not go down the drain. Right. Uh, I guess that's where we leave it. Unfortunately, time is not on our side tonight on the program because of the issue we're discussing. Many thanks to my panel on the program tonight. Colonel Hassan Stanlabo, a retired military officer in the Qatar Secretary, PDP Generation Next, Ayobami Akonji, security analyst and member of the Buhari Support Group t uh, media team. Thank you so much for your time and your contributions on the program. Thank you so much for watching also. I'm Shion Wakimbalo. Bye-bye.